Welcome to the Remnant Sea Bible Study Channel. Today's subject is the dry bones of Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel 37, 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, all breathe, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Now the four winds, every time this is, uh, the four winds is mentioned, this is speaking of the end times, beloved. The Lord commanded Ezekiel to, to announce a twofold message. The dry bones are symbolic for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They are also symbolic for Latter-day Christians who come out of the end times false churches of today. Revelation 18 has a twofold meaning as well. It is speaking to Christians who are within this false church system and also those have become, who have uh, become entwined in the beast world system. The word Babylon comes from the word confusion. And this, this happened when the Lord confused the languages after the Tower of Babel was erected. They tried to build a stairway to heaven, beloved. And, and look, at the, look at the world and the church of today, and they are in a state of perpetual confusion, or you could even say strong delusion that's actually been sent by the Lord himself. And this is a perfect description of the world we live in today. Now, the city that's spoken of is not a literal city, but it is a system that's likened unto a city. It is the church system and the beast system combined. When you visit these modern-day churches, it's hard to tell if you're in a nightclub or in a church. The church has become, sadly, uh, more like uh, the beast world system rather than a church where God's word is taught. And this is true, beloved. They just do not teach God's word line on line, chapter by chapter uh, anymore. It's just not taught that way. And it's a bunch of traditions and nonsense. They teach a combination of the traditions of men and psychology, and God has rejected it. You must remember that, beloved. You can't, psychology doesn't work for the spirit man. Psychology is the study of the suke, the soulish man, and the two are not the same. They do not interchange at all. In fact, there's actually a war going on between the flesh man and the spirit man. Um, now, they've left their first love a long time ago. The first love, beloved, is, is God and, and Jesus. And Jesus is the embodiment of the Word of God. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14 of John 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and walked among us. And Christ said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. The entire Bible is written of God. So why would you go to church and want to study anything else other than God's Word? You don't want to listen to a preacher trying to sell his 57 Chevy from the pulpit and talking about all kinds of psychological mumbo-jumbo. You want to hear the Word of God. Now, they are likened unto the church of Ephesus that has become the church of Laodicea in that steady decline, you see, in the seven churches of Revelation. Laodicea is the last in line before God completely rejects them. Now, they bring nausea to our Father in heaven, and they are in a state of perpetual confusion, and this goes for the church, beloved. They, they, their teachings contradict each other time and time and time again. I can, I could dismantle most of the doctrine I hear from any church that I go to. Um, let's go to Revelation 18.4. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, 
come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. And the light of the candle sh shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no, no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And you can see this. These, these are all terms found within the church. A candlestick is, a, you know, it's, it's the light. It's a light. It's a platform from which the word of God is preached from. The bridegroom and the bride. That's, those are all church terms. Now, if you notice the words light of a candle and bride and bridegroom, uh, and, you know, and then, you know, the, this is all speaking of the church and the mer merchants spoken of here are people that have merchandised the word of God and turned it into a profit making scheme. And I call them prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. And that's exactly what they are. They, they, they're charlatans and they're in it for the money, beloved. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and all and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now this can, you can find the same thing in the beast system and in the church. Um, and the beast system has totally gone against the church now. And the most of the world is turning their back on God. Now the Lord said to Ezekiel, breathe on these who are lost and teach them to come out of her, which is the false church and the beast system. Um, beloved, don't, don't lose sight of this. We, this is kind of a twofold thing here. And it, it, it kind of interchanges, but the Lord is telling you to come out of both of these systems, the church system and the beast system. The modern church has taught those who are part of the ten lost tribes that they are Gentiles. They are also teaching false doctrine to the point of making God want to spew them out of his mouth. Or, you know, God is basically saying, you make me sick to my stomach. I can hardly stand to look at you. He uses this graphic illustration to show us how disappointed he is with the modern day church. He hasn't rejected her yet. But there will come a time in history when he will, beloved, and we are very close. Four winds are always symbolic of the end times. The slain are the spiritually dead, and to awaken them, they must be taught who they are and what their heritage is from the word of God. And this is not being done at all by the modern church, beloved. They are the... the, the house of Israel is truly lost in their eyes. This is all in the setting of the end times, and make no mistake, this the end time, we are in the end times. Verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Now, this is talking about the house of Israel and the end times church and talking about the ones who suddenly realize their, their heritage from the ten tribes. And then also the churches, uh, the people within these churches that realize they're being taught false doctrine and they come out of her. And the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear will hear the call of Elijah. And, and beloved, Elijah is alive and well in the end times and calling these people to awaken. And they will awaken from their spiritual slumber to form a great and mighty army to stand against Satan in the end times. And make no mistake, beloved, nobody's going to fly away in a rapture as taught by the modern false church, this modern day escapism, the easy way out. Everything is easy. Everything comes easy. You don't have to go through anything. You don't have to take up your cross and bear it. You know, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to go through the fire and they believed God for his faithfulness, and God brought them through, just as he will us through the end times, beloved. If the Lord is with you, nothing bad is going to happen to you. 
Now the Lord is saying, is speaking to those in the whole house of Israel who are lost and they don't know who they are. Under the, under the current church system, there's no hope of them ever finding out who they are. And, and also the same goes for Christians. There, there's really no hope for them if they keep on going in this current church system and listen to all the nonsense that's been, been coming out of the pulpits of today. Verse 12, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. This is not a literal grave, beloved. This is this form of degradation. It's a form, if, if you're confused and you don't know the word of God, you're basically, in a sense, in a grave, a spiritual grave, because you're ignorant. Verse 13, And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. In other words, bring you up out of your confusion into the knowledge of the truth. Verse 14, it shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then ye shall know that I have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord God. And I believe this land here spoken of is the, the regathered Israel in the land of Israel. And also, I believe this is the USA, beloved. And I believe the USA is the regathered Israel where the ten lost tribes have migrated to. That's who we are comprised of mainly. And their bones in the dry bone, dry as a symbol of, of, of um, ignorance. And the true house of Israel aren't aware of who they are. The mainstream church academia has been hijacked by the forces of darkness, whether they know it or not, beloved. And many of the colleges and universities uh, have been completely contaminated with this leaven of false doctrine. And this is, this is obvious when you look at what, what the, the preachers, the, the, uh, you know, the product that comes out of these institutions of higher learning. It's sad what they're teaching and they're all, they're all teaching the same thing. It's rare that you find uh, one of these institutions of higher learning that's actually teaching the truth. So what goes in, what comes out, that's what you got, a bunch of false teachers that come out of these places. Um, now the other three hidden dynasties of Zechariah 1, 1.18 are also completely corrupt. And you can see the... the just look at the education, politics, and finances in the world, uh, which are the headquarters of the beast system. They're in complete control right now, beloved, and they're, they're all together corrupt. Much of the t true tenets of the Christian faith are not being taught by the Christian elites who have stolen Christianity to the so-called institutions of higher learning. Instead, the Christian church has become big business, and it's all about big money, big churches, and big attendance. And all you have to do is go in one of these churches, beloved. It's, it's sad. You can't tell the difference between a nightclub and a church. I mean, they got the fog going. They got the lights going. They dim the lights. They try to create this atmosphere where, you know, they bring out the emotions rather than teaching you the true word of God and getting down to business and, and saying, what saith the Lord? They're t teaching a bunch of traditions of men. And this is really sad, beloved. It just, it really breaks my heart. Um, God absolutely loves all of his children and he is no respecter of persons. And beloved, don't lose sight of this. I don't teach who the, the ten tribes are to try to make turn this into a race thing. This is just a matter of fact. And that's all it is, beloved. That's all I'm doing is teaching you the word of God. It has nothing to do with racial superiority. He loves us all exactly the same. And isn't that amazing? Wow. 
I wonder why he's put up with me for all these years. I mean, I just can't believe I have been so rebellious for most of my life, beloved. And the Lord has taken me back every time. I thank him every day for that. I've been grafted in through the blood of Jesus Christ, beloved, first and foremost. But as, but as, a, as a, my Welsh heritage tells me, I was born into the family of God through the DNA of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is only in the flesh sense, beloved. This doesn't make me any better. We are all equal in the eyes of God. In, in essence, we've all been grafted into the family of God through Jesus Christ. Nobody is better than the other. Many have discovered this Bible heritage and they use it as a tool for racism and racial superiority. This ignorance is an example of how scriptures can be twisted for one's own self-gratification or agenda. A true Israelite has a love for all peoples and looks at the spirit and not the race, color, or creed of a person. This is not about racial superiority. It is about being a servant and, and a blessing to others because you yourself are overflowing with blessings. And you want to share that with other people, beloved. This is my motivation, beloved. I love my fellow man. We are an ancient people. We are the same people that God led through the wilderness and part of the Red Sea for. He led us with a fire by night and a cloud in the day to protect the children of Israel. God gave them fresh manna to eat every morning. God was there day in and day out for the children of Israel. We are the same people that God has blessed for centuries, and through our family came the only begotten Son of Jesus, the Christ. God has done the same for America in the past, but now he has turned his back on us because we have rejected him in every way as a nation. And Jeremiah 3.8 tells us, and I saw when for all the causes where backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yes, beloved, God is divorced from, from Israel. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. See, God makes a separation between the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and both have been divorced God has written us a bill of divorcement, but we are free to remarry through the blood of Jesus Christ. We are a peculiar people. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. There is a concerted effort in the world to marginalize the house of Israel. And, and this is a last ditch effort by Satan to get rid of all of the house of Israel on the earth. Now, one example of this is how mod the modern DNA test everybody is getting. And I believe this, has, this is a nefarious effort, beloved. There's dark secrets behind this. Now, this test can be used to create a database to find the so-called undesirables within our world today. Now, think about this, beloved. They can use this for good or evil. And I got a sneaking suspicion in my heart they were using this for evil. Now, America is on the crosshairs of Satan, and he wants to destroy us. The house of Israel is within the United States, and he wants to conquer America and make a way for the new world order. And that's what's going on in the world right now today, beloved. In this day and age, the descendants of Abraham through Isaac are hated through the, throughout the world. And it is not politically correct to be proud of who we are. And this needs to stop. This needs to stop. Now, Matthew 10, 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
Now, this is proof that these sheep are, are, are lost to most of the modern-day church and Christianity, but there's some of us, beloved, who know who we are. And this is what the dry bones of Ezekiel are all about, is preaching to those who do not know their godly heritage in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It saddens me deeply when I hear a preacher, teacher, pastor in the modern church mention the house of Israel and the land of Israel as if they were one and the same. What is even more troubling is when they mention the house of Judah and the house of Israel if they were one and the same also. They just lump them all up into one, into one tribe. All the 12 tribes are just one tribe, the tribe of, of Judah, one of the Jews. So, because of this, all their so-called theology, I put that in quotes, is flawed because of this fact, and they're unable to connect many of the dots in the Word of God because of this. And, and because of this, they lead their congregations astray from the true Word of God. Dry bones in America, wake up before it's too late. Your godly heritage is being stolen from you right now. Let's go to Ezekiel 37, 1. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and it carried me out of the Spirit, out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. He said the dry bones again. It caused me to pass them, but them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. They were very ignorant. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And that's what I'm trying to do right now, beloved. Hear the word of the Lord. Now, you must understand that the role of the USA in the end times is very important. Most of mainstream Christianity will tell you the other 11 tribes are lost forever, but they haven't taken the time to find out where they are. They lump all of the 12 tribes into the single tribe of Judah and forget about the other 11 tribes that have migrated to the USA. Beloved, why do you think America is the greatest nation that ever existed? It's because God has brought a fire by night and a cloud by day to protect America. He has also fed us manna and then parted the Red Sea for us many times. And many people don't see this, beloved. The hand of God has been on America time and again. He delivered his children out of the hand of Pharaoh. And delivered America out of the hands of her enemies time and time again. He has taken care of America all along, even her in her imperfection and sin. Make no mistake about it, beloved. We are not perfect and we have many sins. But as long as we repent, we can stay in good standing with the Lord. Like the children of Israel, the the USA has turned her back on God and he is ready to deliver her into the hands of her enemies again. You must understand that unto whom much is given, much is required. We can no longer kill our babies, our young, and parade our sin in front of God. And God is not going to tolerate it any longer. He's had it. America's heading down the same path the children of Israel did time and time again. And God punished them time again. Time and time and time again. Dry bones wake up before it's too late. Now I want to go over this description that I believe Isaiah gave in chapter 18. And make no mistake, he didn't know the name of the USA when you break this down properly, you will see that this can't be anything other than the United States of America, the greatest land that ever existed in the history of mankind. Let's go to verse 1, 18. Uh, chapter 18, verse 1. Woe unto the land shadowing with wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now looking west from Ethiopia... 
that's what this is speaking about. You're looking west from Ethiopia. And the wings spoken of here are outstretched eagle's wings, which is the symbol of the United States. All the other countries, the wings of the eagle are closed. And this is symbolic for America welcoming the downtrodden, the poor, the lonely, every, every person on earth that wants to come here for a better life. You are welcome. And verse 2, that sendeth ambassadors by the sea, even in the vessels of bulrushes upon the water, saying, Go ye swift messengers to a nation scattered and peeled to a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden down, whose land the rivers have spoiled. Now, the word bulrush would be better rendered water drinking vessel, such as a steamship. Who, sent, who else, and who else sends ambassadors all over the world? And this is a primitive, you know, a rendition of our modern ships that we have today. But a lot of these ambassadors go by ships to the rest of the world that come from the United States. But, you know, now we use airplanes, you know, beloved, but this is symbolic of vessels that carry these ambassadors to all over the world. And the United States is basically, we have ambassadors to every country on earth. Verse 3, All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see you when he lifted up an ensign on the mountains, and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. When America takes up a standard against you, you had better beware. And that's basically summing up what that verse is saying. Verse 4, For the so, for the for so the Lord has said unto me, I will take my rest and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon herbs and a cloud of dew in the, in the heat of harvest. For, for a four, the harvest when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he shall both cut off the springs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches and they shall be left together in the fowls of the mountains and the beasts of the earth. And the fowls shall, sim shall summer upon them. And all of the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. Now, you could say this will be the only thing left if you're na in your nation if you come against America. Now, verse 7. In that time shall be the present be brought, shall the present be brought, unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled and from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trodden underfoot whose land the rivers have spoiled to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, Mount Zion. Now let's, I want to, I want to, I want to go further into these explanations to make this a little clearer to you what, what exactly Isaiah is saying. And you have to remember that Isaiah had, you know, this was a prophecy given to him. And he had no idea what he was talking about himself. So he's just explaining this the best that he can. So let, let's go over this and I'll try to make this more clear. Now, these are, this is, uh, you know, I'm not saying I know more than the translators, but this is my, this is what I would do, and also many other scholars would do with this, beloved. Now, the first word in this chapter is a bad translation, I believe. The Hebrew word hoy is an announcement for attention. It's not a woe. Ho is used in the 55th chapter of Isaiah and should be rendered the same here in this chapter. Ho, everyone that thirsteth. The, the whole object of this chapter says that it should be, rend, should be translated or rendered the same here. The nation described is not one that is meted out and trodden down. The tense is incorrect. It is better rendered that meeteth out and trotteth down. And scattered and pe peeled should be rendered tall and clean shaven. Now, Isaiah, of course, did not know this, but the Native Americans at this time were tall and clean shaven because they had no facial hair 
and they were the tallest race in the known world at that time, or any, in, you know, basically any time, except for some exceptions. Now imagine a tall tree with the bark, with the bark peeled off, and that, that will better help you to understand tall, you know, peeled as you peel the bark off and to a face that's clean shaven and, and none of these, they didn't have beards or anything like that, no facial hair, maybe a mustache, you know, but not a beard. Now to the phrase, uh, it's land the rivers have spoiled would better be rendered divided or quartered. And if you study this, you'll see there are 38 rivers that divide America and no other nation can fit this description. You know, just look at the Colorado River and the Mississippi. They're both great rivers. This nation has rivers just all over. And there are 38 of them that, from what I can count. Now, just look at a map of the USA. It is plotted out by boundaries for the different states, just as a plot of land is when you survey it. That's what a surveyor is. He plots out land. He, he treads it out. He measures it out. To make this clearer, you can imagine a man using his steps to tread out a certain boundary from one point to another. And, you know, now we use lasers and all kinds of expensive equipment to do this, beloved. We don't use our feet anymore and take a guess at what we're doing. Now, which is beyond the rivers of the Ethiopia? Now, this one can get complicated. Beyond in Hebrew means west. When we look at, when we look at a map, the top is north, the bottom south, the right is east, and the left is west. Not so with the Jews or the Asians. They face the sunrise. They look eastward. So before meant east, behind, or beyond, meant west. His right hand points south and his left to the north. Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia meant over his shoulder west. Now, with Isaiah standing in Jerusalem facing the sunrise, and then you describe the land beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, and it will run over northern Africa due west until you hit America, and which are due west from Jerusalem. This was not speaking of Egypt or any part of Africa, but a nation that was west of Africa. There is no doubt that this is America. All ye inhabitants of the world, um, and ye dwellers on the earth, when an ensign is lifted up on the mountains, see ye, and when the trumpet is blown, hear ye. This is, this is saying, woe unto you who have come against America. Now, when America comes marching to your door, you're in trouble, because she has never lost a war from her beginning, and even in her infancy, she was terrible from her beginning. Now, as an eagle with outstretched wings, we welcome all who come to America in peace. But if you come in war, you will be conquered. This is where the saying, America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the new regathered Israel, Beloved, that's the end of this lecture, and I hope you understand that. I hope you understand all the different points that I made in this. America is the regathered Israel. There is no doubt in my mind. And if more people knew about this, I think a lot of Americans and, and the, young, the young kids, this, this new generation, would change the way they look at themselves and America. But this is not being taught in the churches, beloved. And this, this really breaks my heart. I just, I just can't imagine this, how this could, could come about. But it, it's written, the lost sheep of the house of Israel would not even know who they are. And I'm going to do everything I possibly can to, to, to make this known to everybody, beloved. Much love from me to you, beloved.